once again, this week we have a topic handed to us. Uh, it came to me on a Facebook page, and it was by a woman who asked the question, not to me, which was great, but to uh, everyone on her Facebook page, and she's like connected to my Facebook page, so it ended up over there, and I said, I'll take a stab at the question. The question that she asked was this. She was attending some Bible study somewhere, and uh, she said, why did God not just kill Satan in the very beginning when he rebelled? He and a third of the angels in heaven rebelled against God. Why didn't God just wipe them out? That would have been the end of it. Uh, we wouldn't have had all the problems that we have in the world today. So the question was a very good one. <laughs> I'm laughing because some of the answers were kind of cute. Um, they were, one of them was because well, God is love, which is true, and because God loves Satan. Well, actually, no, he doesn't. Um, Satan is God's enemy. How do I know this? Because the Bible tells me so, like the song goes. Matthew chapter 13, verses 37 through 42. Let me get that for you so that when somebody says, uh, does God hate Satan? The answer is no, God doesn't hate anyone because God is love. But God has clearly stated that Satan is his enemy. Verse 37 of Matthew 13 says this, He answered, Jesus, and said unto the crowd who asked questions about, and his apostles about sowing seeds, some seeds that would be sown uh, would be good seed. In other words, he was talking about people who received the seed, the seed, he pointed out a little later in Matthew 13, that the seed was God's word. Some received it well, some fell on stony ground, some fell on uh, other kind of ground, some fell on good ground. But here we go, so Jesus answered them, he said, the sower who sows the good seed is the son of man. We all know, or should know, that when Jesus refers to the son of man, He's talking about himself. Jesus is the Son of Man and also the Son of God. The field, verse 38, is the world with its seed, the God's word is sown, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares, that means like in every church he says, there's wheat, which is good plants, then there's tares, which are like weeds that grow up and choke out or try to choke out the good stuff. It's like weeding your garden. Why do you get rid of weeds? Because they tend to grow around the good stuff and try to choke it out. So he says, verse 39, the enemy that sowed those tares or the weeds in amongst the good is the devil. So see what God is saying through Jesus? The enemy that sowed the seeds or the weeds, uh, the, all the bad stuff, is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers that come to reap that harvest are the angels. That's going to happen during the rapture. <clears throat> As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that, that's out of heaven after the great white throne judgment. He shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, or have sinned and rejected what Jesus did on the cross to save them from that lake of fire. And verse 42, Matthew 13, and shall cast them, his angels will cast them, all the people, including Satan, who have caused iniquity um, and who have sinned without asking Jesus for forgiveness of the sins and without asking Jesus to save them from the lake of fire and shall cast them into the furnace of fire, which is the lake of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. So hell and the lake of fire does not sound good. But I did want to point out in Matthew 13 that the, God refers to Satan as the enemy of God. 
So, why didn't God just simply kill him in the beginning? Let's find out. Because it's a great question. As soon as Satan rebelled in heaven, they want to know, and took one-third of the angels to try to overthrow God, believe it or not, <clears throat> um, then they want to know, why didn't God just kill that, him then? I mean, that is really a great question. And actually, nobody, as far as I could read on Facebook, nobody had an answer for it. So, I'm about to answer it because I love to study the Word, and it's crystal clear why God left Satan alive, um, because he had a particular plan that he had in mind, which was to create the heavens and the earth, and to create man within the earth. Well, let's get going. Uh, so, shouldn't God have killed him? The answer is going to be quickly, no. And here's why. God created the angels, and he created man. And when God created the angels, including Lucifer, angel of the morning, when he was, that was his name when he was in heaven, all of the angels and mankind was created as eternal beings, which means when God created the angels, they will live forever. He created them, he does not destroy them. So the, the angels will live forever somewhere. When God created man, he created within us, it says in Genesis, God breathed into man a soul, a living spirit, uh, and man became alive. And if your spirit leaves you, hey, he gave up the ghost. Remember that saying? That's true. If you give up the ghost, then the ghost goes either into Hades, not the lake of fire yet, wanders around on this earth. That's why there are indeed ghosts. And you say, well, you know, I sense that Harvey's over here still. You're probably right, unfortunately. And then the Bible also says that spirit that the soul that dies, it will immediately be uh, with the Lord in heaven. The Apostle Paul pointed that out. So, but you're, you're an eternal being. As soon as you're born, you're eternal. Your body will die. Your body will decay. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. But your spirit will live on either in heaven or in the lake of fire. Only one of two places it will dwell forever. But between the time of your death now and the time of the great white throne judgment, which takes place in the future, these spirits that die without Jesus as their Savior roam this planet until that great white throne judgment. Okay, so to really grasp why God did not destroy Satan when he first rebuilt, it's important to know what happened in heaven and why it happened. Now again, Satan was known as Lucifer when he was in heaven. Lucifer was in charge, the Bible says, he had a very special place, actually, in the heart and mind of God. Um, he was charged with being over a host of angels, apparently a third of the angels. He was in charge of But Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 13 through 19 says this, God, speaking through Ezekiel, the old Jewish prophet, says this about Satan. And he's almost talking like he's talking directly to Lucifer. You, Satan, have been in Eden, the garden of God. Now, I'm going to guess because I can't prove it. God also made on earth a place called the Garden of Eden. But apparently he had the same thing going because it refers to Satan was with, you were in, the Eden, in Eden, the garden of God. God had a garden in heaven. God has a throne in the third heaven. And all Ezekiel is pointing to everything God had. But you were there, God says to this Lucifer one. <clears throat> Every precious stone was your clothing made of. Satan, or Lucifer, was a beautiful angel, absolutely beautifully adorned. He was a handsome angel, but beautifully adorned. He says, your clothing was made of every precious stone, uh, sardius, topaz, the diamonds, beryl, onyx, all stones I don't know anything about, except diamonds maybe. Uh, jasper, sapphires I know of. It was coated with uh, emeralds. 
and carbuncle, whatever that is, and gold. This is how Satan, how God dressed the angel Lucifer. And the workmanship of your music. Now, was Satan in charge of music? Some say yes, some say no. The Bible really doesn't say that Satan was in charge of music. But apparently, he had, uh, his workmanship was made, and he, somehow music was attached to him, according to Ezekiel. And your gems could have been rings. I got a new one this week. Could have been rings or some kind of jewelry, whatever. Your gems were prepared in you in the day that you were created. Therefore, we now know that all angels were created. You were the anointed cherub that flanked my very throne. So, the throne of God in this garden called Eden in heaven Lucifer what flanked God's very throne. That's how important he was and how well liked he was by God, his own creator. Uh, you flanked my very throne and I have created you for that purpose. You are upon the holy mountain of God. That's in heaven. You have walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire, which is where God's throne is in the third heaven. And he says it, where my throne is. Verse 15, Ezekiel 28. You were perfect, Lucifer, in all your ways from the day that you were created until iniquity or rebellion or sin was found in you. That's the day, and I'll explain what day that was pretty soon, but that's the day that Satan decided to turn against his creator and do things his own way. Ezekiel continues, God speaking through him. He says, By your cunningness, Lucifer, which filled you with violence in your intent to basically overthrow and disrupt heaven, you have sinned against me. So Satan chose to sin against God. Because of that, he says, I will cast you out of heaven and away from my throne, and I will destroy you in time. Well, that's a key verse, because if God says, I will destroy you in time, that really means I could have killed you now, but I'm not going to destroy you until time evolves. Therefore, God has made the, the calculated choice not to destroy Satan in the beginning. Now we have to find out why, right? Because the question that the woman asked on Facebook was, why did God not destroy Satan? And then we wouldn't have had all these problems. Uh, well, here we go. We're going to find out why. He says, God says also in Ezekiel about to Lucifer, I will cast you to the earth. Therefore, I'm going to throw you out of heaven to the earth. We're going to find out when that happened. And the people of the earth shall behold you and know you for who you are. The great deceiver, the enemy of God, the vicious and violent one, the father of lies. We all know who Satan is. Anybody pictures Satan, they know it's evil. And if you add D to the word evil, you come out with devil. Hey! You have defiled, God says, my holy sanctuaries in heaven. You defiled heaven where everything is pure and holy and righteous. And how did you defile it? By the many sins that you have committed, including talking one-third of the angels that you were, in, you, you were in command of to rebel against me as well. That's a huge sin. You sinned, you chose to sin, and then you deceived all the third of the angels in my heaven to following you, and they wanted to overthrow me as well. They chose to join you in your sinful endeavor. And you're convincing, as I say, one-third of the angels to follow your leadership, and rebel against me, I will bring a fire from the midst of you. And that fire will consume you when? In due time. Therefore, there is a time period that's going to lapse between the time God throws Satan out of heaven and the time he burns Satan with fire from within. And that's also, the Bible says that Satan, uh, uh, excuse me, God created the lake of fire for Satan and his angels only in the beginning. And then man sinned along with uh, Satan, so therefore 
the lake of fire is also the same fate that man who sins against God and doesn't confess Jesus as Lord and Savior, everybody ends up in that lake of fire by default. I'll explain that again in a minute. So now we can discover uh, why God did not kill Satan right up front. And first we must discover when this rebellion took place in heaven. God said that he cast Satan to earth. Now, a lot of people, including some Bible scholars, say, well, you know, there was a big rebellion going on in heaven a uh, long time before the earth was created. I say, based on my reading of the scriptures, it's impossible for that to be. When Satan rebelled is this. God created, it says in Genesis, uh, first of all, uh, God couldn't have thrown Satan to the earth because the earth, Genesis 1-2 says, and the earth was without form and void. Void means empty. There was nothing there. There was no moon for uh, night light. The sun had not been uh, created for the light for the earth. There was no atmosphere on the earth. There were no seas on the earth. There were no plant life, no animals, no nothing. The earth was without form and void. Then Genesis goes on to say, then God created <coughs> the heavens, which means our atmosphere, to breathe, so that man could breathe air, got to have a little glass of water, which God also created. Ah, spring water, thankfully. <coughs> so God then created in the first couple of verses of Genesis, the heavens and the earth, then he created the mountains and the trees, and he created them with age, the Bible says. So is a mountain that scientists say, oh, they're 50 billion years old. Well, my Jewish friends and I agree that the earth was really formed about 5,700 and some odd years ago, going back through the Jewish calendar, and they trace everything back to the time of Adam. Nonetheless, if God created mountains with age and trees bearing fruit, obviously he didn't create a seedling and let it grow and all that. So he created these things with age. How much age? The Bible doesn't say. So <coughs> that's why the scientists can say 50 billion, 100 million, 40 billion, 50 million, whatever, means nothing to me. What I believe is that the earth was created somewhere around 5,700 and something years ago and created he things with age. Dinosaurs, when was that? 50 million billion years ago. No, they walked around with the prophet Job. It says so in the book of Job. It's called Behemoth. Anyway, you'd have to read it. I don't want to get on that rabbit trail. <coughs> and besides that, when God created the earth, I'll give you a little science and Bible at the same time, is the earth a round ball floating in space? The sun's up here. Is the earth... There was a firmament of water surrounding the earth, acting like a giant filter between the sun and man whom God created. This water vapor was always there. When the floods of Noah came, that water vapor disappeared and flooded the earth, actually, and created, really, uh, what's known today as the, the seas, representing, I don't know, 75, 80, 90 percent of the earth's surface. That's where that stuff came from. Underground rivers, all that kind of stuff, stores that water. But there was this great firmament, it says so in the Bible. And I believe it acted as a filter to prolong man's age. Adam lived to be 630 years. Methuselah was the oldest living person recorded in the Old Testament at 900... <coughs> Gee. 969 years, the oldest living man. After the flood, God said, uh, after Noah's flood, man will live for 120 years. After King David's time, God said, and it's all been true, man will live three score and ten years. That's 70 years. So there's your time frame for what happened and why that firmament became, uh, was a filter to keep man alive forever. Well, if I had a halo monster from the desert of Arizona and he didn't die in 40 years, instead he lived to be a thousand years, and they grow and grow and grow, 
It wouldn't take long before I had a dinosaur because they would grow huge if time were allowed. And by the way, all the dinosaurs that were created by God, what was their purpose? They ate a lot of vegetation. Uh, some movies show that they ate animals and, you know, they could pick up a cow or whatever and just chomp them away. So I don't know what they did, but I do know the purpose of that. The purpose of that was because God, when he made the earth, knew that one of these fine days, man, he would give them the brains to make things that run on oil, gasoline, heating oil. And the dinosaurs, when they died and were smushed into the earth, they became the oil that's below the earth. Unfortunately, most of it's over in Saudi Arabia and desert places like that, but we have it in Canada and basically all over the world. Oil, that's where it comes from. Um, dinosaurs. Anyway, I see, I go off on these rabbit trails. Forgive me. But you know what? We're learning. Everything is good. So in Genesis, the earth was without form and void. Therefore, he could not have cast Satan to the earth until the earth was made. That makes sense. So what I believe is this. On the sixth day after he formed the world, the earth, and made the atmosphere and then made the trees with age and fruit and vegetables and all that kind of stuff for man to eat, and then he recreated this Garden of Eden and he put man in it that he just created and then he created woman from Adam's rib and set them in the Garden of Eden and they loved the Lord their God. They worshipped God, they spoke with God daily, and they, there was this love relationship between God and man whom he created. That's what God wants from you and from me today, is this close, personal relationship with him. Now, since Jesus died on the cross for our sins, God, you can get that personal relationship with God, but you have to go through his son because of what God sent his son to die on the cross for your sins, and that's the way you escape from hell. But, let me go back to the Garden of Eden, because we're talking about timetables for when Satan was cast to the earth. It is my belief, based on everything I know in this Bible, <clears throat> that Satan looked at man and woman walking and talking with God. And then he basically said, I want some of that. I want man to worship me. And Satan has never changed that tactic. He wants mankind to worship him. When he tempted Jesus in the wilderness, and you find that story in the book of Matthew, if you want to go look it up, he tempted Jesus three times because Jesus was a man. He was born as a babe in the manger. 30 years later, he's going to start his ministry. Satan knows this. He's trying to get uh, Jesus to do and obey any one of three commandments. Turn that bread, that stone into bread, because Jesus was out in the wilderness with Satan for 40 years. And Jesus quotes scripture and says, basically, get lost. And then he comes up with something else. But then the third thing Satan comes up with with Jesus was the original thing that he really wanted. He said, see all this on the earth? It's yours. All you have to do is bow down and worship me. Now, if he could have got Jesus to do that, everything would have changed, right? Well, Jesus obviously because he's God's son, and God sent him, and he's part of the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, then Jesus knew what Satan was up to, and he basically said, get lost. But let's go back to the Garden of Eden. So Satan's in heaven, as Lucifer, with his commandment of a third of the angels, and he looks at man, and man is worshiping God, man is loving God, and he says, I want that. Because I'm handsome, I'm beautiful, I want them to worship me. And again, he hasn't changed from then to this very day. So he wanted that, and that's when he had conjured up the plan to try to overthrow God, which was really pretty stupid to do. God let it go on for three days, then his archangel Michael threw Satan and his thousand angels, I mean, not his thousand, <coughs> threw Satan and his angels, could have been millions of them, I don't know, to the earth, and we'll discover where the angels are and where Satan landed in just a moment. God created, here's why he didn't destroy Satan, by the way. God created his angels with free will 
as we already know, Satan chose by his free will to try to, to sin against God. God created man with a spirit that will live forever somewhere, but he created Adam and Eve and us with the free will choice to either do good or do bad, to do evil or to do good, to follow things after what God has designed for us to follow after in his book called the Bible. So God then set, after he created Adam and then Eve, he set them into the Garden of Eden, where everything was absolutely, it was paradise. But when Satan was thrown to earth, he actually landed in a place called Pergamos, Turkey. That's where his throne is, according to the book of Revelation twice. But God threw him to the earth, and where he ended up was in the Garden of Eden, which is just down below Baghdad, Iraq, in today's world, so that you can become familiar with it. How do I know this? Because when you study the Bible, it shows that four rivers connect together. Well, one of those rivers has dried up since the flood, uh, but three of them, the Tigris, the Euphrates, and I forget the other one, Nile, or whatever it is, all three of those intersect only in one place, Baghdad, Iraq, which was called Babylon back in the old days. So you get in history, you get in science, hey, this is what we do, we learn here on YouTube or Facebook in this case. So with the free will that God provided with Adam and Eve and you and me, uh, there was only good in the Garden of Eden, it was paradise. However, here's the trick here. Because God gave man free will, he didn't want two puppets that just always did good because there was no choice to do evil. So what God said to Adam and Eve was, as I've said in some other messages under different context, was this, look, there's thousands of trees here, eat all you want, there's even one in here called the uh, tree of life. You partake of that, you're going to live forever. Just take of the tree of life, you'll live forever. But out of all these thousands of trees that's in this pristine garden that I made you, there is one. So I'm giving you guys one rule, do not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For in the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So here it is, live or die. That's what God tells us today. Same choice, no problem. So enter Satan. This is why God had to leave Satan there, because Satan was the tempter. He was the rebellious one against God. He knew all about good and evil. He was evil. In fact, it says uh, Satan is the father of lies and the truth is not in him at all. He doesn't believe anything to do with any truth whatsoever. So here he is in the Garden of Eden uh, with Adam and Eve. He approaches Eve and he says to Eve, uh, see, he's not all knowing like God, so he uh, says to Eve, uh, Eve, uh, your husband uh, Adam there didn't possibly, uh, he didn't mention about, uh, you know, not eating of a particular tree, did he? See, he was just fishing. And so Eve says, yes, he did. He told me the day we eat thereof, we shall surely die. Genesis 3, 4 is the key to everything from that book forward, why God did not kill Satan and why uh, we are tempted and, and why Satan has never changed from that day to now. He says to Eve in Genesis 3, 4, I know, okay, God says you will surely die. I say thou shalt surely not die. Therefore, like today, Satan says the same thing to you and me. You're going to believe me, Satan, or you're going to believe what God tells you in that book. It's your choice. You have free will, and he's going to tempt you to do evil every chance he gets. I don't even have to tell you that, because you experience it on a daily basis. Eve, as you now know, chose to partake of the, chose to violate God's one commandment. There wasn't 10, there wasn't 640 commandments, like when Moses showed up later on. There was one commandment, don't take of that tree. So the free will that God gives us had to have the good and the bad, the evil 
and, and God's choices of what to do. And man has the ability to choose which way he wants to go. I believe God or I believe what Satan's telling me. I believe what God's telling me and I find that in his word. Now, um, God says uh, this to you and to me. Jesus said it. It is my Father's will that all who see his Son, Jesus, and believe everything Jesus told them in the Bible, you won't know that till you get in it, should have eternal life. So by default, as I've said before, when you're born, your Father, because you're born into sin, so was I, by default, our Father is automatically uh, Satan. We automatically belong to Him. So when you see violent deaths, it's appointed unto man once to die, Hebrews 9.27, God says, but, when, but He turns you over to your Father the devil when it comes time for you to die. We all have an appointment to, and Satan can, you know, he's pretty creative in how he wants to kill people. As you know, we're, we're like amazed at some of the deaths that go on and people blowing each other up and all kinds of stuff. Where do you think that evil stuff comes from? People blowing each other up or torturing people. Come on. That's what he did to Judas, remember? Hey, Judas, you're all done. You sold Jesus out for 30 pieces of silver. Judas, go take a rope, stick it around your neck, and jump off a cliff so that your guts bust when they hit the rocks below. That's exactly what happened. That's a violent death. Well, that's what Satan likes. In any event, let me read Ephesians 1, 5, and 6 to you quickly so I can finish this off. God decided this is how we get adopted into his family. Remember, by default, you and I are born into sin, we have a sin nature. Our Father is Satan himself. Unless and until we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, Ephesians 1, 5, and 6 says this, God decided in advance to adopt us into his family by bringing us to himself, I'm reading the Bible now, through Jesus Christ, his Son. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. Verse 6 of Ephesians 1, 6. So we praise God for the glorious grace that he had poured out on us who belong to his dear son, Jesus. That's the only way you're going to have eternal life, is belonging to his son. Otherwise, by default, our father is Satan. If we do nothing, if we just sit around and sit back in our easy chair and say, you know, I don't want to get involved in the Bible. I don't want to believe any religions. I don't know what to believe. I don't want to do anything then you are in the default position. Your father is Satan, always going to be Satan. Then when you die, you will face God one day in what's called the great white throne judgment. Then you and your father, Satan, or mine if I didn't get adopted into God's family through his son Jesus, will end up in that lake of fire where torment is. So we have a choice to make. Again, by default, if we choose to ignore God's word, we end up in that lake of fire. Now, there is a link on my YouTube website, and it says Salvation Link. Click on that, it'll bring you over to some Bible verses, and there's a prayer of salvation there that if you say something along those lines, then um, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord Jesus shall be saved from that lake of fire and saved into heaven. Uh, by the way, the angels, remember I told you a few minutes ago, they were cast to the earth with um, the devil. The devil ended up over in the Garden of Eden, and now his throne is in Pergamos, or Bergama, Turkey. So you wonder why all the Middle East crisis is going on? That's why. That's where Satan's throne is. He's not on, omnipresent. He can't be everywhere. But these angels, when they were cast down to earth, many, many people actually are under the misapprehension that the angels that were cast out of heaven are now the demons that uh, the Bible refers to. No, the demons that the Bible refers to are those who are in Satan, who belong to Satan by default, but whom he wants to control to go do dastardly deeds, devious, deceptive, lying, filthy, rotten demons. 
but they're not the angels, the fallen angels. They are chained up in the second level of hell. First level, as I say, is the grave and the top of the earth. Second level goes down to the point of 1,800 feet below the earth. That's called um, the second level of hell, if you will. Down below that, where they can see, is the lake of fire. There are no spirits in the lake of fire yet. They're roaming the earth unless they were saved or born again through Jesus Christ. They roam the earth as ghosts until the great white throne judgment. Then they and Satan himself and the chained angels are cast into the lake of fire. John, you're nuts. Prove it to me. I will. Now, Matthew 25, 41 tells you about the little war in heaven. Then it tells you where the angels are. So I'm all done. I'm just going to read that verse. Then there was war in heaven. Michael, that's Archangel Michael. That's the angel over all the angels. Archangel or Archangel. <clears throat> And his angels fought against the dragon. We'll find out who the dragon is. And his angels. And the dragon lost the battle. Of course, he's dealing with God, his creator. And he and his angels were forced out of heaven. This great dragon, dragon the ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, so now you know who that is, the one deceiving the whole world was thrown down to earth with all his angels. Then after that great white throne judgment, it says here, God will say to those on his left, that's everyone who failed or who rejected to uh, ask the Lord Jesus, who died on the cross for our sins, please forgive me for my sins and save my soul, and I want you to be my Lord and Savior. When you forget to say that, or you refuse to say it, or you reject him, when you get to the great white throne judgment, you'll be judged under the commandments. Did you have a lie, steal, cheat? Yes, guilty. You go over to my left with the goats, it says. To my right, God says, are the sheep, the ones who trusted Jesus as their shepherd. So over here to his left, it says, and God will say to those on the left, the ones who rejected his son Jesus and what he did on the cross, for them, depart from me, you cursed ones, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. So you see, here's proof again, that the lake of fire was originally prepared for the devil and his angels. When man sinned against God, then that same lake of fire is now where justice will be measured out in the end after the great white throne judgment. Over in Jude chapter 1 verse 6, it says this, and I remind you of the angels who did not stay within the limits of authority God gave them. In other words, he gave them free will. He gave them a job to do in heaven. God gave them, but left the place where they belonged, in heaven. God has kept them securely chained in prisons of darkness, waiting for the great day of judgment. So those angels are chained in the second level of hell, waiting for what? That great day of judgment. At which point, they will be judged by God and cast into the lake of fire with all those who rejected his son. And before Jesus came, you had to, if you were Jewish or whatever, if you put your faith and trust in God, then you will go to heaven. They're in a place called Abraham's bosom right now. They're sleeping now until the rapture takes place. And when that takes place, the Bible says the dead in Christ, that's those Abraham, Isaac, Moses, all those guys that died before the cross. God says the dead in Christ shall raise first, then those who are alive and remain alive will be caught up in the air to meet the Lord, um, and so forth and so on. So, see what you can learn here? You learn all this stuff. You now know why Satan was not killed right up front, because he had to be there as the opposing force of good, good, evil, God, Satan. And you were in the middle with free will choice. I could choose to listen to God, or I can choose to believe what Satan says. It's all up to you. So with that, I'll see you guys next week. I hope uh, everything is cool in my world. I hope it is in your world. I'll see you next week.